Tonight, a car fire on the old Alex Bach commuter lot on campus and the impact of the severe weather from yesterday. And a Baton Rouge favorite will also be performing at the highly anticipated Mayweather versus Pacquiao fight. Newsbeat starts right now. Tigers, I'm Michael Edmondson. And I'm Jackie Massey. Thanks for tuning in for our last Tuesday show of the semester. At around 10.30 this morning, a vehicle caught fire in an LSU commuter parking lot. The flames were extinguished in an older mo model Chevy Impala in the old Alex Box gravel parking lot adjacent to Tiger Stadium. LSU PD spokesperson Captain Corey Lalonde says they do not have any more details on what started the fire right now. Tiger TV reporter Michaela Morgan was able to be at the scene to see some of the damages. As schools closed the severe weather passing through the area yesterday, some of the bars here in Baton Rouge decided to actually stay open. The house in Tigerland was one of the first, but Fred's and Bogey's also tweeted about their open hours. The bars opened due to school closures despite the weather, encouraging students to have tornado parties on their day off. Watching this video will leave you stunned. WGNO in New Orleans caught this during the terrible storms that took over South Louisiana yesterday. Strong winds forced some train cars off elevated tracks in Jefferson Parish, close to the Huey P. Long Bridge. Surprisingly, there were no injuries. The New Orleans Public Belt Railroad says the rail cars were empty and did not contain any toxic, toxic or hazardous materials. The Southern University Human Jukebox Marching Band will be playing a role at Saturday night's huge fight between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. Director of Bands Nathan Hamer will perform at Mayweather's arrival ceremony at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Hamer says there will lead, that he will lead him on stage to the song Nobody Does It Better. The band will be alongside comedian Ricky Smiley and Doug E. Fresh. After this performance, the band will release an app on the App Store called The Human Jukebox. Baltimore is stunned after a long night of riots, looting, and violence. More than 200 people were arrested, 15 police officers were wounded, and more than 100 cars were burned. The National Guard entered the city and 100 more members are on the way. The city is in a state of emergency and is now being compared to a war zone. Here's a clip from the viral video of a mother confronting her son after she finds out that he's throwing rocks at police officers. been a peaceful six days until the last day, which is obviously Saturday night. We had a very, very nice funeral today for Freddie Gray, and this is not about what Freddie Gray is all about. This is something completely and totally utterly chaos. This is lawless gangs of thugs roaming the streets, causing damage uh, to property and, and injuring innocent people, and we're not going to tolerate that. Cleanup has begun throughout the city. The Baltimore Orioles game with the White Sox has been postponed, and Johns Hopkins University has canceled class for all of today. Well, now we'll go live to Kristen Bertel to see some of the damages of the storm. Are we through with these storms, or can we expect more? The weather was a little rainy and overcast earlier in the day, but as you can see behind me, the sun's starting to shine again over Death Valley, which is a major improvement from all of yesterday's weather craziness. And when we look at tonight's forecast, you can see the temperature is going to drop down from the 70 degrees we had earlier in the day all the way to 52 degrees, and there's only going to be a 10% chance of rain. For tomorrow, you're finally going to get to see some sun again because it's going to be mostly sunny all day with some clouds earlier in the day and the temperature is going to be around 74 degrees. Thursday's weather is going to be pretty similar to what you're going to see tomorrow. It's going to be mostly sunny again with a 0% chance of rain and hopefully by Thursday, ground will clear up, will be pretty dry again and what's left from the tornado's debris will clear up too so we can get back to hanging out in the prairie grounds and in the quad again. That's all the weather I have for you for now. Keep watching to see if this weekend's forecast is one full of storms or sunshine. Now back to you at the desk. Coming up in sports, Cody Krupp tonight will tell us if softball can break a three-game losing skid in their finale on the road against Missouri. And a former track star sets a new world record. So stay tuned. Of tonight's sportscast, Adam Schefter has reported that former LSU left tackle and projected first-round pick Lyle Collins has been brought in for questioning regarding a murder in Baton Rouge of his former girlfriend. At this time, he is not looked at as a possible suspect, but we will continue to follow the story, so stay tuned to Tiger TV for any updates. What was one of the hottest teams in the country for much of this season? With a quick blink of an eye, it was a three-game skid for the LSU softball team. 
and they are now tied for the fourth spot. And they look to get out of that funk in game three against the Missouri Tigers. We head to Columbia where there's no rain in sight for this one. LSU trying to pick up the final of the three game set before heading back to Baton Rouge. Scoreless game in the third inning. Local product Bailey Landry with the infield single score AJ Andrews who had doubled and now it is 1-0. Still in the third, two on for Sam Simmons. She laces a shot over the left field wall. That is a three run home run, 5-0 LSU. That is only her second of the season. Slumber Bianca Bell wants in on the fun, crushing her 15th bomb. This one is up and out. Of now that's going to give the Tigers a 6 to nothing lead. That was her 40th of her career. The route is on at this point, 6 nothing. Well, make that 8 nothing now. As Dylan Silpak rips the gapper, she brings home those two more runs. And LSU is going to actually finish out this one 9 nothing. But a scary moment was going to happen in a little bit here as Bell, chasing after this fall ball, slides and gets out of the way. Look, looks bad at first. Bell pops right up with a smile on her face. LSU, though, is all smiles, crushing Missouri 9 0 in five innings. Rain, wind, tornadoes, and more rain. The aftermath of yesterday's storm left fall pulls down at Alex Fox and other damages, but quick work by facilities has tonight's game scheduled as planned with a few minor tweaks. We're actually going to play with, uh, with modified foul poles tomorrow night, but I think they're going to rig something up where maybe we get a little 20 foot extension, uh, something temporary. Uh, they're also going to take down the, the windscreen on the, the playing side of the batter's eye unless they feel that the wind dies down and then get somebody in to repair the one that's there now. Ranked LSU baseball welcomes in another SWAC opponent, this time in 11 and 36 Elkhorn State. 6.30 p.m. start and coming off a weekend with their number one battle versus the number two Aggies of A&M and the number one pitching staff in the country. But the Tigers are looking to keep the momentum going from that series win into another nationally ranked matchup looming this weekend in Starkville with Mississippi State. LSU has won 14 of its last 16, and hopefully this time around, unlike a previous WAC matchup with Southern, they take care of business from the start. Yeah, especially after facing uh, you know, some velo. They had guys with throwing 90, 95 with, with some real good breaking balls. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to see tomorrow, but I know it's not going to be that. So it'll it'll be it's an adjustment. It, it honestly is. It's uh, I'd, I'd take hitting off of Texas A&M if I had the choice. <laughs> then hitting 70, 80 mile an hour stuff. Yeah, it's tough. Just like those guys in the big leagues that can't hit those slow knuckleballers or anything like that. I can recall a game earlier this year against <laughs> Southern that was a little bit testy for us. Yes. And there should be a northerly wind blowing in tomorrow, which won't help the hitters much at all. So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a low-scoring defensive battle tomorrow night. Um, we'll see. Former Lady Tiger All-American yeah, tracker Jasmine Stowers burst onto the Friday. international spotlight this past weekend when she hurtled her way into a world-leading time of 12.4 and a victory at the Drake Relays. This took place in Des Moines, Iowa, and could be a preview of the coming Beijing World Championships. Get this. It was her first championship in a professional event, and a new early favorite could be emerging for the 2016 summer. Oh, with the NFL draft just two days away, LSU cornerback and projected first round pick Jalen Collins did himself no favors when reports broke of multiple failed drug tests during his time in Baton Rouge. Right now, the ranked, the fifth ranked cornerback going into Thursday selections. It will be interesting to see how this affects the draft stock coming off a surgery of a fracture in his foot. And finally, if you play fantasy sports online, there's a bill coming up this Wednesday that may interest you. It would make betting on fantasy legal, and right now, Louisiana and four other states have laws against this kind of gambling. Coming up after the break, how students studying for finals were affected by the weather. Stay tuned. Severe weather could not have come at a more coincidental time as yesterday was the start of dead week here on campus. Tiger TV's Michaela Morgan has more with how the weather affected students' preparations for finals. High speed winds, tornadoes, and rain swept through South Louisiana yesterday, leaving damage on LSU's campus and surrounding areas. 
but with Monday being the start of dead week, many students here on campus were concerned with the damage that the weather caused to their finals preparations. Uh, Apple won't have power till Wednesday, so I have to stay at my boyfriend's apartment, which is like the only, one of the only ones with power right now. And it affects his finals because he's in engineering and he needs complete silence and everything like that. And I need to make a lot of noise, shuffling paper. Elementary education major Katie Kettleson says that the weather caused her to lose concentration when trying to study for her finals. The weather really has affected us a lot. And Kettleson wasn't the only student whose studies felt the impact of the storm. Public relations major Emily Anderson says the storm caused schedule conflicts for her group project. So now we have to all work around our schedules today to find a time to meet so we will be prepared for our real presentation tomorrow. And while the storm did leave damage to some areas on campus, all classes resumed as scheduled this morning and students can be seen once again studying for their final exams. For Tiger TV, I'm Michaela Morgan. And speaking of finals, you can take a study to break tonight and enjoy free pancakes at the President's Late Night Breakfast. Beginning at 10 p.m. at either one of the dining halls, the breakfast is free with an LSU ID and will last until midnight. After the break, I'll fill you in on upcoming legislation about legalizing marijuana in the state. And we'll be back live with Kristen Bertel to find out the weekend forecast. So stay tuned. Your last political update of the semester. One state representative makes an interesting comparison between pot shops in Colorado and Apple stores. Representative Dalton Honore recently visited Colorado to do research on his latest bill. It proposes legalizing marijuana on Louisiana's 2016 ballot. Honore says he's never smoked marijuana or been around people using the drug. He says he wants to stop locking people in jail for smoking weed. He says weed should be treated similarly to alcohol. The challenge, he says, is getting the bill on the ballot. He wants to convince legislators that it's more than just a vote for marijuana. Bobby Jindal isn't too excited about this bill. He says he does not fully support fully legalizing weed. But if the bill is on the ballot, it still may not pass. In a 2015 Louisiana survey, polls dropped from 56 to 45 percent in support of pot legalization. In other news, Governor Bobby Jindal says he may veto the state budget if it includes a tax increase. Higher education cuts are getting discussed instead. Louisiana University may face an 82% cut to state funding, but Jindal's budget plan will protect TOPS, even though the scholarship costs the state $250 million a year. That's all the news I have today. I'll be back next semester. Thanks, Jackie. Now to Kristen to show us what the weekend weather will be like and if we need to stay inside. Back to the weather. Even though we have some rain here and there today, there's a week full of dry and sunny days ahead of us. Starting tomorrow, there's going to be a 0% chance of rain through Sunday, so you can finally make plans to spend time outdoors again without having to worry about being rained on. You may see a few clouds tomorrow, but other than that, you can expect to see mostly sunny skies again, which will hopefully lighten the mood of dead week. The low for this week was today's temperature, which was at 72 degrees, and it looks like the temperature is going to rise a little higher every day this week, and by Monday, we'll all be sweating because the temperature will be all the way up at 86 degrees. Temperature may be rising during the day, but they're going to drop back down to the low 50s every night after the sun goes down. That's all the weather that I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here tomorrow at 5 with the latest in weather news. Now back to you at the desk. Thanks, Kristen. Exciting to finally see that sun again. Coming up next, we'll find out how students really feel about using the LSU Bookstore. We'll be right back. Welcome back. As the semester is coming to a close, students will soon start to worry about where to get their textbooks for spring intercession or summer classes. LSU Bookstore is a centerpiece for the university, making it one of the leading bookstores on any college campus. Out of 722 college bookstores, it's the largest campus bookstore in Barnes & Noble. The bookstore's general manager, Paul Stevenson, says they are actually a separate entity that pays rent to LSU to be on campus. Uh, of our sales, we have a guarantee that we pay LSU $1.75 million a year. With that amount of revenue and the bookstore responsible for paying their own employees, the partnership was a no-brainer. Uh, it doesn't cost the university anything for us to be here. But the bookstore often sells their textbooks at higher prices, causing students like Skylar Beasley to seek cheaper alternatives. The LSU bookstore is my absolute last resort. Although Beasley has scholarships and a full-time job to cover her education expenses, she says that she is concerned about her student loans. 
by the time I graduate college, I'm going to be $32,000 in debt. To help students save money, the bookstore offers a textbook rental program, and Stevenson says it has been very successful. In just this last year, we saved students over $500,000. And... Beasley has participated in the rental program, and she says she does find it helpful. It is a better option than buying it. I'm all for renting from the bookstore, but not buying at all. Stevenson urges students to consider where they spend their money. Whenever you shop here, at least you know that your money is going back to your institution. However, Beasley says she will continue to use alternative resources to get her textbooks. And that money is most likely not going to me, so I still am more confident in my decision to use those outside resources. For Tiger TV, Casey Catalanato. For information about LSU bookstore prices, visit lsu.bncollege.com. After the break, we'll give you a little bit of comedy to brighten your day before the end of our show. You won't want to miss it. Welcome, viewers. I am Pat, and this is Mitchell, and welcome to a special 30-second episode of Long Island Medium. Mitchell, I'm getting a transmission. I'm sensing a spirit, Mitchell. No, you've been having too many spirits, or the problem oh, is we don't get any Mitchell. cable out here. That's the direct TV coming in on Did you a pet recently? When I was knee-high to a tadpole, my last pet was a pet frog I had by the name of Tijon. He lived in a shoebox from Boots Grocery. Mitchell, I'm getting a transmission from the afterlife. Oh, Dijon God. is very, very upset with you. Look, what did you do, Mitchell? Look, it was not my fault, but my daddy took his legs off and put them in a sauce pecan. It was quite good, Shane. You know, you had the tomato sauce and oh, it was fried. You ever Mitchell, had a good frog leg? Yeah, it's kind of like chicken and fish. I have not. I don't eat my pets, Oh, see Mitchell. what you do is you get in the boat and you reach out and you pull out your frog Mitchell, and you deep fry another him. spirit. I'm sensing it. Did you lose a relative recently? I don't want to talk about it. It was my cousin. Was he your we were cousin Paul? Look, Paul and I were in the boat. Paul. Paul. It was Paul. I See, it. look, we were gator hunting, and he fell out the boat. <laughs> came up and ate him, and it wasn't my fault. But well, anyway, I don't oh, want to talk Mitchell, about it. He's, he's not getting back to me. That's it. I don't, pooped. I'm tired. I can't do it anymore. I don't know. Well, Let's get out of here. For Pat and Mitchell, that's all we've got for today. Joining us, guys. Unfortunately, that's our last Tuesday show of the semester. But before we go, we want to say great, great job, job, I kick. To everybody and over here. hey, don't forget about that pancake breakfast in the dining hall from 10 to 12. Get that syrup. Eat those pancakes. Good night, everybody.